What's up guys, Under Drummer here again with another helpful how-to video. Today I'm going to show you how to use crossfade transitions, how to apply crossfade transitions to all your images or video clips in PowerDirector 12. I'm also going to show you how to get rid of that annoying message that pops up in PowerDirector sometimes that says, hey we found an old project saved somewhere, do you want to try to recover it and show you what folder is holding your autosaves and you just go in there and you delete it and it power director stops asking you finally i'm also going to show you how to produce in 60 frames per second because by default power director 12 is not set up for 60 frames per second you have to go in and make your own profile to be able to do that and i know power director 12 has been around for a while and i believe they have power director 14 is out but a lot of people use still use power director 12 i do and this is one of the things that had just bothered me for the longest time and I just recently figured out how to do it. I thought I'd share it with you guys. Um, as I go on and learn more and more about PowerDirector, um, I start to like the program more but I, I also I, I end up hating the program for certain, um, certain things you can't do that you should be able to do and maybe they fix those in 14, I don't know. Uh, but anyways, this is going to show you how to apply crossfade transitions or whatever transitions you choose to all of your short all of your images or your short video clips. So you can see here on the screen I've got I've got a fade in between uh, every other picture here. So this image here and this image here there's a fade in between it. And I've got a ton, a crap ton of images. Okay, six minutes of images. Let me add these and I'll show you. You can do it the long way. I'm just uh, highlighting all my images here. We're gonna bring it to a new track just for the purpose of me showing you this. So we go here to our transition room and we go to the fade transition. And we place that down over the top. That's one. I've gotta do that to Eat every one of these where they're joined or every other one where they're joined. It's going to take me all fucking day. Or you can do it the quick way. First thing you need to do is go to edit, preferences, make sure in editing, under editing, what kind of transition type you want. I got mine set to crossfade. You can do random or favorites. So this is to show you how to do the crossfade one. Default transition behavior mindset to cross. You can set yours to overlap or either one. So I have this on crossfade and this on cross. And then make sure this is selected. Add transitions between photos when applying magic motion. That's selected. Okay. Now, with all the clips selected, or just, I believe, go to, uh, yeah, I've got control A. All right, I'm going to have to delete these to show you this here. So. Now, transitions between each of these, or between every other one of these. So, um, Magic Motion button, the Magic Tools button is here. That's the little wand with the stars. Click on that. Select Magic Motion. Once you're in here, it doesn't matter what you select. So, I think I just ended up picking Zoom In since it's the, it only adds the Zoom In effect. That'll apply it to all your highlighted clips. Now, since we have inside preferences checked, add crossfade transitions along with magic motion. Now when we play, we're going to see our zoom effect that we added with magic motion. And since we have that box checked, we're going to see the transition, the fade in between each. Okay, the problem is we don't want the, we don't want the zoom effect. We, we want to keep the, the transition, but not the zoom. So, who th would have thought that it's as easy as this? Just when you have your magic motion, where did the magic motion thing go? Oh, we got to select these again. Control A, make sure they're selected. Go back to your magic motion and just hit reset. Now, this is like super counterintuitive. I, I would have never thought that this is the way to do it. And, and uh, one of the reasons I dislike PowerDirector is one of its cons, I should say, is there is very little support out there for it. They, if you uh, ask for support, they want to know your your dog's name before they 
You know, what's, what, per, which version do you have? Where, how many upgrades do you have to it? Which, what's your computer spec? It's, you know, I'm just asking a basic, simple question. How do I apply transitions to all, for, to all clips or to all um, movie clips or to all images? And I got to give the guy my birth certificate and my fucking DNA. So that's one of the reasons I, I dislike PowerDirector. Uh, one of the reasons I like it is it's, it's mostly easy to learn how to use. But there's certain things that are really counterintuitive, and this is one of them. Just hit reset. That will only remove whatever effect you picked. It doesn't remove the transitions. I mean, it's awesome. It's a it's a trick. It's an easy way to put transitions between all your clips or your or your images. But who would ever figure that shit out? So here it is. There's the crossfade transitions between every single image. And I, like I said, you know, there's six minutes of images here. Um, what I had to do, because I, I wanted it every other, was to go through and delete them like this. And that only took a few seconds. And I don't want any transitions in between this. So you just have to go through and delete it. Delete it on the ones that you don't want it. But it's a quick way to add transitions across all of them. So that's the first cool trick. The second cool trick is how to fix the autosave temporary file dialog that pops up sometimes. This thing can be really annoying and I didn't know how to get rid of it and now I do so I'm going to show you. So what's happening is you did not get a chance to save your project in PowerDirector but it autosaved for you. So it's asking you do you want us to restore this temporary file? It's a nice fail safe but the dialog box continues to pop up over and over and there's nothing you can do to get rid of it. There's a location to get rid of that autosave so that it stops, PowerDirector stops asking you. It is under project and it's this location here. Mine is app data roaming cyberlink PowerDirector 12.0 autosave. So you can just highlight this, control A on your keyboard, and then control C to highlight it and then copy it. And then go to run and slap that in there, control V to paste it. The untitled project is the culprit. Make sure you delete the untitled project. If you didn't have a chance to name it, then you didn't have a chance to save it. And that's the one that's causing the dialogue to pop up. Uh, I had it happen to me a few times. PowerDirector shut down or something happened and it wasn't closed correctly. And then it kept asking me and I didn't know where it was storing the files because it's in they're floating in, in app data in roaming which nobody ever looks there for things. So that's the second cool trick. The third and final trick is, re is 60 frames per second. I used to think you had to record in 60 frames per second to produce in 60 frames per second. Maybe for true 60 frames per second, you do. But one of the things you can do in PowerDirector, and this does depend on your graphics card. You may get some graphics card uh, problems. Is I, I, I use MP4s. You can build your own profiles, your own video profiles. So edit your your uh, timeline frame rate. I try to make sure that's in 60 frames per second, but I don't think it even needs to be. Pretty much you just have to render in 60 frames per second. And the way to do that in PowerDirector is uh, set up your own profile. And what, an easy way to set up your own video profile is just click on one of the standard profiles. 1920 by 1080 is a good one. If you're using 4K, I'm not using, I don't have any 4K devices yet, so, or 2K, you can do this stuff. So let's do, let's take this one for example, the MPEG-4 1920 by 1080, 30p and 16 megabytes per second. Click on that, megabits per second, and then hit um, customize create a new profile and it will take all the stuff that is in that profile and transfer it over and the only thing that you'll have to change is go into video and just change this to 60 frames per second change that to 60 frames per second that's it save it as a new um, save it as your custom profile my custom profile 6 and it should output your videos in 60 frames per second if this has helped you at all, please remember to like and subscribe if you're not already. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helps somebody out there. If you want, check out Amazon.com for this kick-ass He-Man play mat slash card mat. It's almost 24 inches long by 14 inches tall, and it's 
just uh, awesome. I use it right here in front of my computer, as you can see. And I think it was 25 bucks. 25 bucks, I'm very happy with it. I'll put that link in the description below. You can click on there and go check it out. I'll also include the link to my Amazon review of the Playmat. You can read that if you want. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.